Hey guys, Evan here. Just doing a bit of a kit video today um, on what you should bring with you perched and roach fishing. Here we have some reels, the rods, and uh, all the small equipment that you need in the, in your backpack. So, um, yeah, we're going later on today. We're going to be myself and Rory. We're going to be uh, fishing in Clanlara in this uh, small piece of a canal um, that has some nice uh, small roach in it. Uh, Rory knows that for a fact because he's been there quite a few times. So I'm just going to show you what you need to uh, bring for a basic roach or perch fishing trip. First of all, in this small little bait box, you just have a small handy sized float with the orange uh, top. You definitely want a good float because that's going to be your key to when you get a bite. That'll be bobbing up and down or it'll just shoot down whenever you get a, get a good pull or a bite. We have some spinners here, just some small ones. Uh, particularly good on sunny days when the sun's shining on these uh, small silver or gold dishes uh, they have there. Uh, some nice lead weights. These are very soft ones. Um, they're the, they're uh, larger ones and they're small ones. I have a size 10 hook there. Um, that wouldn't be as good as this small little size 16. But uh, the size 10 will still catch you um, a big enough roach. But the smaller roach will only go well. They'll, uh, this size hook suits them better. And by the way, they're both barbed, which means. Hold on, if I can get this up. They both have that tiny little tooth. I'll try and focus it. Yeah, yeah, they have that tiny little uh, tooth there. And that basically grabs onto the fish. And um, if it's barbless, if it has no barb, then you'll definitely be losing fish. That's happened to me quite a few times. I've gone in with a barbless hook and it's just, the fish has just slipped out of it. The barb is what keeps it on. So, uh, yeah, moving on to the knife that you have. You definitely need a knife or a multi tool or some kind of cut, uh, cutting uh, implement. This is just a mini fixed blade. This has the little button there. Um, it's very sharp. I've sharpened it a good few times with just a ceramic sharpening uh, sharpening rod. Very handy. Takes up no space and it's practically practically weightless. Um, onto the pliers. I've got two types here. And um, I reckon that they're probably the better ones because uh, you can reach down into uh, fish's mouths and take out the hook with the tiny little top there. But if only if you only have this kind of uh, pliers, that'll do fine as well for um, clamping on uh, lead weights and stuff like that. I actually bring both of them because that's probably better for. Uh, clamping on lead weights onto your line, and that's probably better for moving uh, hooks or uh, whatever. Now onto the pack uh, that we're going to carry all this in. Just a small camouflage uh, rucksack with a few small pockets in the front. One for a water bottle, one for stowing pliers or knives and stuff, and one for uh, carrying the main stuff like the bait and the bag that you're going to keep your fish in if you uh, catch it, catch one. Um, I use this uh, drawstring bag, but you can use any plastic bag that you get from a shop. Um, this one's a bit more durable, it won't, it won't like tear or stretch like those plastic bags usually do. And you don't want losing fish inside your rucksack, it will smell awful, if they do. Alright, now moving on to the type of rod that you should have. Um, I've got three types here. Uh, these two are basically the same. They're uh, fold up, which basically means that this folds into that, and, f and it folds into that, into that, and back down into there. And then this one is just a two-piece rod, 
or you can remove or I'll just show you now. So you can just remove it. Into two pieces. The two piece rods are actually probably well they're usually uh more durable than uh, they're usually stronger than these ones. These ones can be quite you know flimsy. I definitely wouldn't rec wouldn't recommend this kind of rod because see they're v the pieces are very loose. They don't lock in very well apart from these two, except they're jammed. So um, yeah, they're I w I definitely don't like this rod a lot. And with the wooden handles, they can decay and all that. So I recommend uh, a foam handle or just a plain plastic handle. This one's probably going to be the one that I'm using mostly today. I might bring that one as well, I'm not sure. But this one is nice and small, good for uh, fishing off, you know, a narrow bank, into a narrow canal, uh, and that's the kind of place that we'll be fishing today. Um, so, yeah. It's, I think it's about uh, four foot, maybe, or a metre and a half. I think that's about, about right. I haven't measured it exactly. But, um, and this one is about two meters or two and a half meters so uh, both of these they're grand but um, this one will actually be ideal for today uh, like I said this it it is very long and it's very flimsy and um, so yeah I'm definitely not a fan of the fold up but that one it locks in nice and nice and uh, easily on the eyes and it's actually much sturdier than that one even though it's you know plastic it's actually fully plastic compared to that one, which is uh, it's either metal or plastic with a metallic finish. I'm not sure. But the one thing you can take from this video is that when you're buying a rod, don't buy a flimsy fold up. Uh, fold ups are grand, but you have to make sure that they lock in nice and easily and that they don't just slip out or that they don't jam. Uh, if you have a bit more money, you can go for the two two-piece rods, which are definitely the best. Now onto the reels. Um, a reel is quite an important piece of equipment as well, because that's where your line is coming from. That's where you're going to be uh, reeling in. The fish is going to be hanging onto your line, and you need a good, re reliable reel to bring it in. Um, we've got two of the same here. Uh, this came with came with that rod, and I've got. A longer version of that rod, actually, uh, that this came, that this came with. Um, they're both plastic, uh, just fully plastic, apart from this. And um, yeah, they're grand. They're three ball bearing. All three of these, actually. <coughs> just says it there. This one is my favorite, though. It's got it's fully uh, die cast metal. With the little uh, rubber twisting thing there, and just a plastic. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, it's just the plastic handle, handle piece. Um, you definitely want to be going for a nice durable uh, metal reel rather than a plastic one, because yeah, definitely the the metal reels are much more reliable. You also want to be looking for a reel that is uh, nice and free. Uh, when you're reading in, so I'll just show you uh, what I mean by that. Um, basically, when you're reeling, you want your reel to be nice and smooth like that, and uh, you don't want there to be any stoppages, like you know, like juttering like that, or um, any tangling in the in the line because the bar gets in the way or anything like that. That's that's what makes uh, that's what makes for a good reel. When it's when all these when uh, all these pieces are well put together and it's very free. So this rod, as you can see, or sorry, this reel, as you can see, is very free. It's nice and smooth, and um, I've haven't like I I don't go fishing as much as I'd like to because there's school and everything like that. But whenever I have gone out uh, fishing, I've had no problems with this at all, um, and I actually haven't used two reels back here back here at all because uh, I'm not actually sure how well how well they work I've just used this the whole time 
So, um, yeah, die cast metal reels are the best uh, compared to the plastic ones because you don't definitely don't want your reel breaking as you uh, have have a fish coming in, and the line uh, here. Actually, yeah, I'll just move on to the line now. So that's basically the the full thing on the reels, metal over plastic, and look for a free reel. If you're in a fishing shop, just try them out. Don't be afraid to try them out. They, they uh, definitely should be free um, when you're reading in. Now onto the line. Uh, it's just basic uh, one pound line, but one, two, and three pound line will definitely work. Uh, two is probably the best, but this one pound line uh, works perfectly as well. It's transparent, sort of, with this uh, kind of blue tint in it, so you can see where it is. Um, <coughs> Alright, so uh, that's basically the whole kit, apart from the rain jacket, that's, that's a big thing in Ireland that we definitely, that all fishermen need, um, is a good waterproof rain jacket because of the uh, incessant raining, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, reels, line, rods, pack, and all the little gizmos that you'll need uh, to make the fishing. Um, you know, to have all the equipment there that you'll need inside that. All right, um, now that all that we need to really do now is uh, go fishing. And um, I'll get back to you. Uh, when we get to Clonlara, I'll show you the bait that we're going to be using actually. Uh, there's going to be a tub of maggots that I'm buying from my local uh, angling shop just across the bridge there in Balna. And I'm not sure Rory might be digging up some worms. I probably could give uh, some digging a go uh, for some worms. But I'd say the maggots probably uh, do better. Maggots are perfect for roach. And uh, worms are actually very good for a perch so I, I'd say if you're thinking of going on a small little uh, fishing trip for perch and roach you know bring a few of both uh, maggots and worms they both work so you know you can experiment even put half a worm and one or two maggots um, on the hook so uh, yeah uh, see you when we get fish Hooked up with Rory, and uh, we've come out to the canal in Clanlara, and uh, we've come here with Anthony, Rory's brother. He's just he started off down there, so we set up our rigs. Very basic, just a, a float there, about half a meter between that and the two lead weights, and size sixteen. Or 14 hook. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going for roach, so we're using maggots. Red and white. And uh, we have a good feeling about this place because we've seen a few fish already rising. So we'll get back to you if we catch something. So uh, I just cast in here into this small area. And uh, came out with this little guy, a uh, small roach, pretty cool, he just took the little uh, hook in there. This is too small to use on a system for pike though, so I'm just going to throw, uh, throw it back in. And I'll just show you how to safely do that. Let's remove the hook. I can. Yep. So that's that little guy. I'm just chuck him back in. That's all there is to it. That's pretty cool. That was uh first catch of the day. Apart from Anthony, he caught uh, one perch. So, uh, yeah, continue fishing. Uh, that was a good start. He was uh, very small, but still, it's very fun. Uh, just seeing the flow bob and just reeling in those little guys. So uh, yeah, I'll get back to you if uh, Rory and myself catch any more. Hey guys, uh, I just caught a fish here in this uh, small area. 
of uh, canal. And it's actu actually uh, quite a decent sized perch. So um, I'm just going to show you how to correctly store your fish uh, once you catch them. Actually, I'll just put down the camera and remove the hook. Sometimes these hooks can be caught <coughs> uh, quite deep in, so quite slow process getting them out. This guy bit it really hard. I think I just have it out now. Okay, so there he is again. Decent size, so I'll be keeping this guy. So what you want to do is just clean him off a bit. <clears throat> Even there, just give him re, re oxygenate him there just a bit. Then you can bring him over uh, to your bag and just put him in, and uh, that's basically all there is to it. Um, this guy will probably. Yeah, it'll be a decent size for a system for a pike. So yeah, <coughs> um, I lost actually quite a big roach in here as well, and I caught another perch in here as well. So um, except that was very small, uh, so I just threw it back. Except this guy is probably probably a good size. I'll just uh, keep. So unfortunately, uh, we have to leave now. But um, we've uh, we've kept two fish and Anthony racked up a good few as well. Yeah, he's down there. He's, uh, he's going to continue fishing for a little bit. Uh, that's one of the perch that Edwin caught. I caught that one. The uh, small knot, for sure. Mm -hmm. And one more, bigger one. We've already caught that one. That's uh, yeah, Overall, I only caught uh, three perch. One of them fell out of my hands. <laughs> and and uh, fell back in. I and the other one was just like, extremely small. It was a baby one. And I think I I think I caught six. I caught three perch and three roach, except the last one roach that was about that size. So I was a bit disappointed with that. But um, yeah, it was, that was good fun. We're gonna have to come back here sometime. And uh, yeah, right. See ya.